man, am I excited about today. I just got back from taking my part 107 exam and I passed it. And man, I'm a terrible test taker. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Did I just copy somebody? I passed with a 92% on this thing. Holy cow. It is crazy. I did not expect to get a 90. I was walking into the test just thinking to myself like, okay, if I get a 70, I don't care how I do it. I just want to pass it. I don't care if it's 90, 80, 70, 100. It doesn't matter. As long as I pass this, I won't have to worry about it again. And um, I did a ton of studying. I know I'm a terrible test taker. So I thought I was gonna be, I was super nervous going into it. And I thought I would like, gonna be like getting there and be like scratching my head and not be able to get through it very fast. But I actually completed the test in like 35 minutes. And then because I doubt myself so much, I went back and I, you know, reread all the questions just to make sure I didn't, you know, do anything crazy, and I had so much time, I was thinking like, why not? Oh, but look at this thing. Speaking about time, this is so awesome. Boing! Like, oh, just cool art stuff. So going back to the part 107 stuff, that is the one thing that I would tell you and suggest to you as you take this test. Even if you breeze through it and you finish early, go back, reread the questions, just to make sure you didn't you know, get one of those details mixed up. Like you read the question real quick and say, like, oh, there's the answer right there, bing. But you didn't read that it was like saying like not a part of the 107 or, you know, just where you missed maybe one word that could have given you a different answer. So um, I actually reread re through them all and I didn't change anything. Uh, but I, you're, the cool thing is you are able to mark the questions and you can click a button and it goes back to all your mark questions. So I had two questions that I was like, kind of guessed on. And honestly, I didn't really go back to this and see what I missed because I got 92 and I was like, I don't care what I missed. I don't need to retake this test again the same exact way, at least anymore now that the recurrent is online and, and all that stuff. It's not as much pressure of going in and paying a ton of money into these testing centers. So the biggest question that everybody always asks is, should I pay for these online courses or should I just study what is on the FAA site and a lot of the free videos online? And I say yes and no. It depends on the kind of person that you are. For me, I knew I was a terrible test taker. I was worried about like not being able to pass the test. So I paid the $150 to take the Remote Pilot 101 class just so I can have that reassurance of, hey, I failed the test. At least I'll get my money back for the class and not feel too terrible. And at least I knew I had a really solid thing that I could not worry about reading the study guide through FAA and just go through that course. Now, after taking that course, taking the test, and I also did a number of these free options that I'm going to provide you here today. I thought Remote Pilot did overall did a very fantastic job. They had a ton of questions, and a lot of those questions, I did find some sort of variation of that question on the test. So that was a good positive thing. Um, the other thing that I did is FA, the FAA and through this site that I had to register for in my class, the PSI site, they had a practice test. And the cool thing about the practice test is it was exactly like what my test was when I sat down on this cruddy computer with a really old school, you know, keyboard and mouse. And it's like, you're like, all right, is this thing going to die while I'm using it? I mean, it didn't, it worked fine, whatever. Um, but they also provided me with tools like the book that everybody's going to be testing out of that part one of 10 book that you could buy on Amazon if you wanted to have a better knowledge of what it looks like. But everybody's like, oh, you gotta do that so you can feel But I'm like, I don't know, it's turning pages or scrolling down on a PDF didn't really bother me. I felt like it was felt like the same to me. So, and that test booklet was also on this practice test. Like you click a link and it shows you the diagrams of all the thing. And it was exact, I mean, it was exactly like the test. So I feel like if you go on and do this practice test from PSI, I just keep doing it and doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it as many times until you consistently get, you know, really high passing scores and you should be great. 
um, if you know the content. Like, don't be guessing or that the other trick is like memorizing the questions. What I would do is I go through all these practice quest question tests, and I even if I knew like, oh, I've seen this question before, I know it's, but I also am go through the questions and act like I'm teaching myself the question. Like, okay, the reason why it's this is because of this. And then another thing you could do is, it's really helpful for a lot of these questions, especially if you're going, have anything with the weather or something like that. Like, ah, I don't really know what this is, but this says that there, there needs to be fog. And I know that there can't be wind turbulence in this one because, Fog likes to be in stable air so it doesn't move around because once wind comes in, the fog is gone. And both A and C have like turbulence or wind gusts in them, and B doesn't. So it's gotta be B. So there's stuff like that where you can like look through the questions and kind of figure out like what you know the answers are supposed to be. Read through all the answers and immediately take out the ones you know for sure are not it, especially on questions where you don't know the answer right away. But honestly, when I was going through this test, I felt like when I got done taking it, I was like, I, there was only two questions I felt like I screwed up on, like I, that I completely guessed on. And the rest of them, I felt like I knew it pretty darn well and I did the right answer. I'm assuming that of the five that I got wrong, the two that I were, was tripped up on was probably the two that I didn't get right. And the other three were ones that Maybe I didn't read through the question well enough. And the problem is I'm not really good at memorizing what questions were on the test like verbatim. So I couldn't be like, well, this one is the one that I think it was. I have no idea which ones they were. And they only give you like a little representation of like where, what section you need to go back and re reread if you, for the ones you got wrong and it doesn't show you the questions. But I thought if you pass the FAA practice test, then you would be super solid and good. The other thing I would say is, uh, so the Tony Northrup video was a fantastic free video. Um, there's also like a guy, Better B-Roll, I'll link all these things down uh, in the description below, did a great job of going over a lot of the chart stuff, um, especially if you're, you're a newbie. Tony Northrup did a great job of overviewing the facts and he did a pretty good job of explaining the METARs. So I feel, I feel like you wouldn't necessarily need the Remote Pilot 101 for that type of stuff. It's just that those classes, they go over and above detail. Now, so I had a number of different questions there on my exam, and like this is how I broke it down, and I made notes of what I saw when I first walked out. A lot of the questions were just rules, hazardous attitudes, and stuff like that basic like 107 stuff. Uh, there was like two questions on the new 21 regulations, like one of what was one of the categories, and what was you had category one and what was the weight classification for drones in category one um and then the other one was one question about remote id and that was like uh you uh like when should you enable remote id which i thought was pretty basic so it, you i feel like you didn't even have to have any knowledge about remote id for that particular question so i kind of got lucky i guess in that aspect um i had one latitude and longitude question where i had to like read and te tell it where the airport was at that longitude and latitude. Uh, I had th uh, three METAR questions, uh, a number of different sectional chart questions where you got to look at the chart and be able to tell what airspace you're in, what's the ceiling of the airspace. One question where it said like you're on this doing the ra railroad from these two city points to this city and do you cross through any airspace and what airspace is it? Um, and mine was class uh, D airspace. There was like there are two questions on how the uh, like gr st uh, stuff affects the airplane. One was like you know pretty much all the your weight is in the back of the plane. How does that affect your your airplane? Um, and it had like three different things. And there are a few interesting you know one two of them sounded right. One was clearly wrong. And then you you had to kind of figure out the best one for that. There were two or three weather questions. So. I know that there was one about stable air, unstable air, and then there was a, you know, precipitation, blah, 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 blah. What character, what kind of weather should you expect when you see that? I also had a question asking how far away from cloud, like a cloud ceiling do you need to be, which is, you know, 2000 feet, you know, away, and then can't be any closer than 500 feet above you. That is pretty much it. 
I was kind of shocked. There was l less weather than I thought there was going to be. Um, but, you know, the METARs, you know, since there's like three or four questions with that, for me, I would make sure you definitely know METARs. But, yeah, I mean, those were the big portion of my exam. And I heard, I've heard some people say they never they never got any latitude and longitude. Some people say it was a ton of latitude and longitude in sectional charts. I think I got a lot of questions about the rules and regulations scattered with chart questions, then one latitude and longitude, and then like one or two from each of the other, other groups. Uh, there was definitely a lot about the hazardous attitudes. I think I had you know three or four questions just on that. So. It was kind of okay, and I think at one at one point I had two very similar questions back to back, which was like the same answer. So and in, and of course there is a few, number of those who's in charge of this, the remote pilot in command. So and then there was like one the remote who you know the person that works under the remote pilot of command that's in charge of keeping the line of sight. Okay, yes, the visual observer. So there were just a number of questions that were definitely in there from a lot of these practice exams. I think the more stuff you soak in, the easier it ends up being, and it ends up being an easier test. There was a lot of YouTube videos I watched where the people were like, it was nothing like the practice, like, I mean, everything that Remote Pilot 101 said was in my video, for the most part. Uh, it, there might've been different wording of it or whatever, but I felt like taking those classes, everything was in it. Same thing with the Tony Northrup video. I thought everything that he was said in his video was on the test, um, but these other Remote Pilot 101s just reiterate it in deeper detail, so it helps you retain it better, I think. I thought the test was pretty darn easy once you grasp all this stuff, and there's so many practice tests and stuff out there. I'm gonna link a bunch of stuff in the description that'll help you pass it, and like I said, I'm a terrible test taker, and I passed it with a 92%. Hope you liked this video. Uh, there'll be plenty of other Sony content and cameras, uh, and if you've passed a test, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, and good luck in your endeavor, because it feels really good to get that when you get out of that class and, uh, and, and that, that test. And it feels great that all the hard work and studying paid off. So, anyways, if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll answer them for you the best I can. And you guys know that I will see you in the future.